I'm so glad that we are finally able to do this. Um, finally, Tina and I get to cook together on a live halfway around the world, and you're gonna be teaching me how to make lumpia, which is the Filipino spring rolls. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs> first things first, we're gonna let everybody know who you are and what you're all about, because that's really important that they get to know you, as well as get to know your very first children's book called My Lola. Yeah, so I'm a vocal coach based in Sydney, and um, I have just recently launched a book called My Lola. It's a children's book. It's all about bringing the family together with Lola's cooking. So Lola is grandmother in the Filipino language. And um, yeah, so I'm excited to, to um, do this lumpia demo because this demonstration was inspired by a, a, a illustration in the book which is all the kids coming together creating lumpia with lola for a party <laughs> that's so awesome and what i love about this book is that it does feel like like my upbringing where we used to go to my grandmother's house and we would like help to cook and we would sit down and eat you know a ton of indonesian food because my heritage is indonesian um, and it was it was such a sense of comfort and knowing that like you're in a safe space There was all this love around you because everyone's just there to be with each other and have an amazing meal So I love the illustrations I love the storyline of your book because that's what it's all about. It's all about family connection and of course food Yeah, <laughs> my favorite and your favorite too <laughs> So let's start cooking our lumpia. So we have we ha you've actually gotten um different meat to me yes it's interesting because i'd be interested to know what um how that's going to turn out because i've only ever cooked deer and venison when i was at uni studying food and nutrition just so everyone knows if you've never heard of lumpia before normally the filling it's basically a spring roll where the filling is normally beef and vegetables, and then it's wrapped up in an egg roll wrapper. Um, but what's really interesting is just like Tina mentioned, I'm actually going to be using ground deer because that's just what we have at home. And I think what's the coolest thing about this particular dish is that it, it can be so versatile. Like you could use whatever kind of meats you like, you can use whatever kind of vegetables you like. And I'm sure depending on the different families, they probably use more of one thing and less of another. And so I love how like, you can really create your own family tradition around food, but it's in the same ballpark of the lumpia recipe. Yeah, yeah. So there's lots of people who cook it differently as well. Like they'll cook the meat and the vegetables beforehand and then wrap it up and then fry it. But for today's recipe, I'm actually just going to not cook it. I'm just going to throw everything in the bowl. And this is about a pound of meat? Yeah, a pound is like 500 grams, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. This actually looks smaller than yours. <laughs> Oh, well, everything's bigger in Texas. So. Yes, it is. it is. So we have a ground. This one is pork and beef. I actually just saw this in Coles, and it was just a bolognese beef. Oh, so then you kind of squish it up. So we're like breaking it up so it's more manageable? Yeah. And then um, what we do is just we just put some onion in it. Now, I'm just... I feel like for me, this onion, this amount of onion might be a bit too much for my liking for, for what I have in the meat. So, you know how you said to eyeball it, <laughs> which our lollas always do. Yes, that's so true. I feel like mothers and grandmothers, they eyeball everything. And then when you try to get a recipe from them, they don't know the measurements because they're just like, I just throw in a bit of this and a bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, I know what you mean. And then they leave out a, then they leave out a um, important part of the ingredients or the recipe, and so it's not quite like the way that they cook it. Exactly. My mother has done that to me before. I've asked her for a recipe that I love, and I made it the very first time and realized this isn't right. Like there was a herb in here that she had forgotten or something, and so I asked her about it. And she very nonchalantly was like, oh yeah, that herb's in it too. And I was like, it's not in your recipe that you gave me. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, <laughs> so I've, I've kind of left that this much 
because okay. I didn't want to put too much in there. But uh, then we can add the carrots. And do you have finely diced carrots there? Yeah, so finely dice them. And it's finely diced onions and finely diced celery as well. So I had the onions, the carrots, and the celery all in one bowl. So I just poured it all in and I'm trying to mix it all together now. Nice. And some people, um, sometimes I grate it. If I don't, if I'm a bit, like, I'm a bit lazy, <laughs> I just kind of grate, grate the carrots. And, and that works too. Some people mince everything together. Mm. And so this is my, my celery. This is what it's looking like now. How's this feeling? Mine looks pretty similar, I think. Let me show you up close. Does it seem right? Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. And then so so we want to add the egg, an egg in there. It's pretty easy, right? Yeah. Well, what I love is that you could make these ahead of time too, right? Yeah. So that's what um, we normally do. Mum will either cook it beforehand and have it all wrapped up and then we just fry it the, the day of the party or the gathering. Um, or if we have time, we'll just make it from the, from, from at home all together if, while everyone's just cooking and yeah, setting up the table and all that stuff <laughs> and catching up. If we've got leftovers, we'll freeze it. Oh, nice. So you'll freeze it uncooked or you'll freeze it cooked? Oh, we'll freeze it uncooked. Then you can add your salt and pepper. Okay. So I've got a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper here. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just gonna again eyeball. <laughs> and then I have soy sauce. Is that where your soy sauce is in? Oh just for today. <laughs> I mean, compared to mine, it looks so cute. I just poured it into here because I thought, oh, I'll use it for my demonstration. It's really cute. I love it. It's from um, my my brother and her and my sister-in-law. They went to China, and this is what they brought back for me. So we put pour um, a tablespoon, or again, eyeball. I think I need to put a bit more. It's not even. It's not coloured much. So. So how coloured should it be? Um, you know, that it looks like it's all coated. Oh, okay. But not too much. You don't want it too watery. Okay. Yeah, I think you could use a little bit more too. I'm just using the Kikkerman, the gluten-free one. So I'll just pour, just... So I reckon for that, maybe it was like two, tea, two, two tablespoons. That was about the same for me too. So that's how it's looking so far. I, mine smells really good already. It smells good? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Whoa, I'm so glad we're doing this because I'm basically going to eat this whole thing afterwards. Oh yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Because it'll be lunch time. Yeah. So I have some flour as well. Yeah. So if you feel like the like the it's not coming together as much, it's a really good idea to add. Just sprinkle some on, and then mix it and see how it's how it's looking. So the flour is like a binder, so it just helps everything to clump together. That's right. Yeah, just like what the eggs doing as well. I feel like I'm sticking together pretty well. And the sound of it as well, like Mum always cooks with her ears, or you know. Listening to the sound of it, um, of how it's sounding. So, if it sounds a bit too wet, which mine sounds a little bit too squishy and wet, then we'll put some more flour. Okay. I think that's what's really cool about cooking is when you've done it a lot, it doesn't just become about taste or sight. It's really like all of your senses get used. And so I love hearing that because it tells me like, one, obviously your mom's made this so many times, that just listening to it, she can hear when it's right and when it's not right. Um, and then also it's so great because I feel like that's that's why cooking can be so therapeutic because it uses all of your senses yeah. to make a meal. And it's very rewarding. It's very like, 
Um, you feel really proud of yourself when you when you're able to do it. How's yours looking? Let me show you. Okay, I've never actually cooked with um, deer deer mince before, so I'm 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 thinking that it's very low in fat. Yes. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to twice cook that. You wouldn't want to cook it first and then put it in the thing. Yeah, it would probably get dried out. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes that's why um, the half beef and half pork is good because we got the fat from the pork. So shall we start wrapping? Yes, okay, I'm very excited about this. Hopefully I can do it. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Normally the the pot is already on the on the on the stove and it's like warming up okay. so that you can wrap a few of these and then start creating. How hot does the oil need to be? Um so some people they'll get a chopstick and they'll put it in and when the it bubbles, when the chopsticks bubble, then you know that it's ready. Well, I think I'm going to I'm gonna turn the heat up. So my oil is here on the back inside an electric skillet. So we've got our spring roll wrappers and you have it like, like this, like a diamond. Now yours is a little bit bigger, but that's cool because your meat looks a bit chunkier than mine. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to lay it on there like that. And then you're going to put like probably a tablespoon. Oh, okay. In the middle or? Not in the middle, kind of like just over here, like, like there. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Towards the corner closest to you, right? Right, yes. Okay. So then you roll it. Okay, so you take the corner closest to you and you roll it up over the meat? That's the way. You're okay. very good at explaining things. <laughs> so maybe roll it like as much as that. Oh, can you see that? Yeah. And then and then you can fold it. Okay, so One fold in the right sides. Yep. Yeah. And then the other side. Okay. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. And then you just fold it all the way to the end. I mean, sorry, roll it. Earlier, you actually made like a little bit of a flour and water slurry. So I put, I put it in the microwave for about 10, 15 seconds, and then it kind of becomes like a glue consistency. That's what I use for to to kind of hold the ends together. So you just like, so you just want to just push it in there and and fold it. So just in the corner that's open? Yes. And right. then you just stick it like glue. Oh, it does work well. So then yeah. that way it doesn't open up when you're frying it. So that's what it looks like, guys. Does this look great? That looks beautiful. It's only my first one, so I'm going to get better. Okay. <laughs> and it's, it does, that, that always happens. I remember teaching Rob how to roll. Like it was a bit... There was some time, sometimes it got a bit too wonky that it'd open up while you're deep frying it. Oh, yeah. That's okay. It's all learning. The thing with these egg roll wrappers or, or the spring roll wrappers is that you have to keep them moist the whole time while the package is open. Yeah. Otherwise, it dries out so quickly. So I just have like a wet towel, kitchen towel here that I'm putting on top of the open package so that it stay moist. I just use paper towel like this. There's a song in the My Lola book called The Lumpia Song. Yeah. Which I won't sing all of it today. Um, but the, there's a section that goes, let's wrap and roll and wrap and roll. <laughs> I think what's really awesome too is that you have songs that go with your book. Because I think that when you're teaching kids things, especially like for instance, if they're not for instance, Filipino kids, and you're teaching them something new, they learn so much better when there's music involved. That's true. And and I am combining music and also dance moves. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So for the toddlers especially. So there's a section where um, the Lola song, there's um, 
there's a section where they'll bounce on their parents' knees mm -hmm. and then there's actions that go la la, la la, so they're opening up. Um, yeah. Makes me smile, la la, la la. Um, owns her style, so this is owns her style. <laughs> la la, la la. Um, a warm hug cooks with love. So this is a stirring up move. Oh, so cute. I love it. So at the same time, they're bouncing to the song and it helps with their, um, their timing. It helps them develop their timing and coordination because they'll be able to, if you do lots of bouncing exercises like that, they'll be able to bounce the ball and cut with scissors and it helps them. Plus, I think that a lot of kids learn better, not only when there is, you know, reading and singing involved, but when there's movement involved. It's kind of like, they always say that you are able to retain things better when you're using all the senses, like we just talked about with cooking. That's right. So, um, I think I might start putting these into the oil. By the way, I just wanted to show you, this is my best looking lumpia so far. Oh, that looks pretty. Well done. So it, my oil is smoking, so I should put it in now. Is that too hot? Oh, that's too hot. Don't let it smoke. I'm going to dunk these in. I normally use tongs. Okay, I do too. I feel like it's safer. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear that? Yeah. Sometimes if your mixture is too wet, it'll end up um, like spitting. So you don't want it to be too wet. Okay. I think I figured out how to roll these. Uh huh. So you kind of have to make sure it's creating that round shape as you're rolling it. Yes. And, and keeping it like snug. So I'm using sunflower oil. Nice. Because um, it, it uh, fries, I think it fries nicer. So I'm using vegetable oil. Oh, actually, I feel like it's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to try to put a couple in now. How's it going? It's going well. It sizzled a little bit as I put it in, but it's not sizzling so much that I think it's going to get too brown. Oh, good. See, it's a nice little, it's not... Nice little bubbles coming through. And I guess the other thing to mention too is if you've already pre-cooked the filling, then all you're doing when you're frying the lumpia is just cooking the outside of it. But in our case, since the filling's not cooked, we have to make sure the temperature is not so hot that it, the outside gets too brown and the inside is not completely done. Yeah, that sounds nicer. The way that it's just sizzling away. Yeah, it's like, almost like gently simmering. Yeah, that's it. And I definitely feel like this would be so fun to do like as a group, like if you had your family and your friends sitting around the table all rolling rolling the lumpia together. That's what we always do, it's so fun. And then we just catch up. I didn't get to meet my, my Lola's. Yeah. But um, that's how my mum learnt to cook, because she has five sisters. Oh, wow. And she was the cook of the family. So she was the one that went to the market and cooked for all her sisters and her, her dad. And then, yeah, so the, all the sisters had like their own special job and she was the cook. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so at 16, you know, you're kind of forced to look after the, she was kind of forced to look after the family. And, and all her sisters, they're so... I just look up to them. They're all so powerful. My aunt, like last year, she got an award from the Filipino president for her work doing, um, working with Filipinos overseas. So she's a doctor. So this container, I just put um, paper, paper towel so that okay. it absorbs all the oil. We're just looking for a golden brown on all sides. Is that right? Yes. So you're gonna have to twirl, yeah, turn it around in the pot. Okay. What do you normally serve the lumpia with? Like any kind of sauces? Yeah, so normally we'll have sweet chat sweet chili sauce. Sweet chili sauce and tomato sauce. 
Yum, I'm so hungry. It smells so good. Okay, I cut it in half and it's completely cooked through. Cool. It smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna eat. Yeah, try it. Mmm, this is our spring roll. Ooh, they look good. Mm. Oh, it's nice and crispy. I'm gonna try my one. It's cooled down a bit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, hot. I lost my yellow It's really good. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I got a bite from the carrot. It's really nice to have that like textural contrast with like the the soft tender meat and then it's like the crunch from the carrot. It's so good. Yeah, I, I actually like the that that texture as well. There's some some spring rolls they like to mince everything so there's yeah. no texture and I prefer to have all the different textures like the onions and the celery. Yeah. The smell and the flavor really remind me of like the Indonesian spring rolls. Oh, so it's like it's a great like like memory starter for like things that I used to have when I was younger. Oh, nice. So these are the mini ones, mini spring rolls. Mum actually uses the bigger ones, like the ones that you're using. Oh yeah. For the vegetable spring rolls. Oh, I'm so excited to eat all of them. Yeah. So <laughs> Thank you so much for hopping on the Zoom call and and trying out these lumpias. Thank you for teaching me. I'm so excited to basically devour the rest of these. Um, but before we go, we have to tell everyone where they can get your book, My Lola. Yes, yeah. So you're going to put a link on on your sites, right? Um, from Amazon. So you can get it from Amazon. It's actually an ebook at the moment. But if anybody um, that uses your link gets um, gets the book from Amazon, I'll just get them to message me um, on Tina at tinabangle.com and then I'll send them a free song from the from the Lola. I just love it. I feel like it perfectly captures that feeling of when you go to your Lola, your grandmother's house or a family member's house where you all get together and you just make amazing food and you catch up and you spend time together. And I think that, you know, even though we may not be able to do that right now, um, just the idea of it and remembering it can be so powerful and helps us to get through these crazy times that we live in. Yeah, thank you. They're beautiful words, Renata. Thank you.